Greetings everyone and welcome to the Ultimate Stellaris Technology and Technology Bee Lightning Guide. In this video, I will show you how to use the technology system, how to make use of the technology system, and how to abuse the system for best results. So let's begin with the basics. Technology is a very important aspect of the game and indeed is one of the choices you have to make at the very beginning. When you start up the game, there are three options that you have to choose for technologies, a physics option, a society option, and an engineering option. These technology options are mostly separate, and uh, you can only research certain physics texts in the physics tree, and vice versa. These technologies play a significant part in your empire's development, because the bonuses you get from technologies are quite significant. For example, you get a better weapon. The blue laser that you can research and mount on your ships is about 30% better than the red laser that you start off the game with. That means that with just a little bit of a tech edge, your fleets can potentially be 30% better than those of the enemy. And even in late game, where bonuses become a little bit less significant, it is still very important, and uh, you can get very significant bonuses such as those in the society tree. But I'll get to that a little bit later. Let's first look at how you can actually start to manipulate some of the options that you get from the technology tree. Obviously, this game's technology tree is not like most 4X games, as in you don't have a single technology tree where you can have all the options available to you from the start, and all you have to do is choose a certain path. Instead, this game uses a card system, where certain cards are more likely to show up than others. This is called their technology weight, and uh, you can increase it through a variety of means. For example, if your scientist has an expertise in field manipulation, you are more likely to go ahead and get field manipulation techs. You're not guaranteed to, but you are about 25% more likely. Things like your civics and ethics also affect this. For example, if you go ahead and run materialist, robots have a higher chance of appearing. And if you go ahead and run a certain civic, such as mechanist for example, robots, droids, and synths are all going to have a significantly higher chance of appearing. In addition to this weight system, there's also a tier system. In this game, technology is split into 5 different tiers. Tier 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. To be able to get any text from the next tier, you have to research six texts of a preceding tier. For example, once we research six texts from tier one, we can unlock texts from tier two. And so in our situation, in addition to all the texts that we still have in tier one, uh, we will have space torpedoes, destroyers, armor three, droids, machine mod points, star bases, housing, and engineering unlocked. All the other texts of tier two will be locked until we can actually go ahead and research the proper requirements. This is the exact same way you advance into tier 3, by researching 6 texts of tier 2, and then getting to tier 3, then getting to tier 4, then getting to repeatables and tier 5. This is where most of the good texts are, but they are going to be quite a bit more expensive. In fact, one of the ways of telling the tier of a tech is by how expensive it is. For example, this tier 1 tech, standardized corvette patterns, is going to have a base cost of around 2,500. A tier 3 tech is going to have a cost of roughly 12,000, a tier 4 is going to have a cost of 24,000, and a tier 5 is going to be quite a bit more expensive, and is going to be around 50,000 or even higher. At tier 5, there are also certain texts called repeatables. You can research them more than once, however they become more and more expensive the more you research them. The bonuses that you get from repeatable texts are less than the bonuses you get from normal texts, because, well, by the time you get to repeatables, the normal texts will already be all researched and so these are going to be your only option for increasing production later on. Contrary to what I originally thought, and uh, what most people probably think, repeatables don't actually come at the last tier of a technology, but instead they come at the third tier of a technology. Or if there's no third tier, at the last tier. Uh, because once you're at the third tier of technology, you're likely at tier 2 or 3, and tier 5 is a long ways away. However, repeatables do tend to clutter your uh, tech options once you get to the late game, uh, so watch out for that and uh, try to avoid researching third tiers of text that you're not really going to use. That about does it for the basics of the weights and tier system. Now let's get to how it actually works in game. In game, once you research a tech, you have a selection of options. This selection of options is generated once you finish the tech and cannot be rerolled in any way other than researching a new tech and getting a new list of options. This allows you to reroll the technology pool by choosing a tech that you don't really need. Uh, but that is cheap and quick to research. Ordinarily, just being able to reroll tech in this matter is uh, quite useful enough, but there's also one quirk to it. All these tech options will have a 50% reduced chance of appearing in the next roll. So for example, if I don't want any of these technologies, I can pick standardized correct patterns, wait for it to get researched, and then get a new selection of techs. As you can see here, these techs are not at all what we had before, but let's say one of the techs was one that we had before. 
for example, we saw disturb build patterns once more. On the next roll, it's going to have an additional 50% reduction in appearance, dropping it down to 25% total rate. As you can tell, this 50% reduction applies to the existing weight and not the base weight, because we still have a chance of getting certain techs three or more times in a row. Although that chance is quite small, and uh, it's going to be quite unlikely that that happens. As such, you can reroll for techs that are quite a bit more desirable to you. And before you ask, this only applies for the next roll. Once the tech is unseen, that is completely reset and it has the base chance of appearing um, according to its weight. This also means that if you have two good options, making a choice is quite difficult because the second option is unlikely to just appear on the next roll to be chosen. It can happen, but it's unlikely. And while we're still in the game, let's also talk about the technology speed system. The way research speed works is that all technologies have a certain cost to them and you have a certain amount of progress per month. The progress per month can be checked right here. Uh, this number right here is just your base research, but this number of progress per month takes into account your scientists and other bonuses to your empire. This progress per month is not actually the same for all technologies. For example, if I choose this tech, it's gonna stay at a 57% bonus and is gonna give me 580 progress per month. However, if I choose a tech like coil guns, I will get a 97% bonus and an effective progress of 728. This is because in addition to the base 57%, I also get certain bonuses. Since this guy is an expert in propulsion and this is a propulsion tech, he will get an extra 15% research speed. Additionally, I have a research agreement with another empire that already has this tech. A research agreement will increase research progress by 25%, so it is something worth going for and something worth paying attention to. This effectively means that you can't really just trust the price of a tech, but instead you will have to judge whether or not it's worth it in terms of uh, the usefulness to your empire and also whether or not you have scientists and bonuses to boost its research. It also means that having good scientists is just as important as having a good base research amount. This amount right here is just what I produce on my planets with all the research bonuses affecting pops. As you can see here, we have quite a few bonuses compared to just what we have in our technology tree because these bonuses on planets and these bonuses on scientists are completely and entirely separate. And you know what, while I'm still in the game, why not? Let's also cover the scoring system and how technology is calculated there. Technology level in the scoring system is more indicative than just a simple number of how much research you get per month because it indicates how much tech you researched previously and uh, is basically like, I don't know, 1% of the points of tech. It's somewhere around that, but you can easily tell which empire has more tech by taking a look at their technology score. This is a significantly more accurate number and a representation than just going ahead and uh, looking at the context screen and seeing, oh, equivalent. Equivalent is roughly 30% over or under, and uh, so you could potentially be 30% worse than someone and still be considered equivalent, so keep that in mind. And now, with all the basics and uh, not so basics covered, let's talk about how you can use this to your maximum advantage. This technology tree is something I created myself. If you want to see it for yourself, there's a link in the description to the full file. But anyways, let's go ahead and uh, have a case example. How you can get the synths in as little text as possible. As you can see in this technology tree, the main branch of research is the bold line and the off branches are the smaller lines. So in the case of this uh, robotics tree, you go from powered exoskeletons to robotic workers to droids to synths, to synthetic personality matrix. You don't actually need this last tech most of the time, but if you want to go ahead and synthetically ascend, which by the way is the most powerful ascension in the game at this point, you're going to have to go ahead and uh, go all the way to it. One thing that's quite obvious about this tree that is not like the other trees is that there are certain requirements that are not from this tree. For example, colonial centralization is a tier 2 society tech. Uh, highlighted by this green outline. And Positronic AI, for sense, is actually a physics technology. It may not be obvious at first, but powered exoskeletons are the tech to start off this tree. You cannot actually get robotic workers without researching this tech, and so even though this tech is only like 5% minerals and 5% army damage, you still need it if you want to go ahead and research robots. Robots are very powerful, you can get an extra 2 pop growth per planet, and uh, you can even increase it to 2.3 with rapid assemblers. It is very nice, and it is very much worth it. However, robots are robots, and can only work minor or food jobs, so you likely are going to want to go ahead and get droids. Droids can work a lot more jobs than robots, and you will have significantly less unemployment caused by not having the proper districts. For them, however, you not only have to research 
robotic workers before, you also need to have six technologies from this tech tree. In the best case scenario, we research part exoskeletons, robotic workers, robo modding because it is quite good and has a very high chance of actually appearing, engineering, assembly patterns, and mining because all of these are very good technologies. After the first six technology picks, we will have all of these techs remaining to us and also droids, engineering, mining, mineral purification, star bases, and destroyers, and also space torpedoes. Space torpedoes are quite nice. Provided that we already researched colonial centralization in the society tree, these are the tier two techs that will be available to us. However, since we have not yet researched these technologies, they will also be in the pool. If you get lucky enough to just go ahead and uh, select these six techs, uh, instead of dealing with any tier one techs, we will be able to uh, go ahead and unlock tier three. It's very unlikely that we're gonna be able to just get the tier three techs without having to deal with the tier one techs. Uh, so let's say we also research stuff right here. Now, when we go ahead and reach tier four, we have uh, quite a few options available to us. At the point where we can actually have access to synthetics, we will have quite a few options to choose from, and synthetics is just going to be one of many. In fact, it's going to be one of 19, or potentially even more techs, that are available to us for research. That is not good. And uh, so to really be able to get synths, we have to develop a path to get to there with as few technologies as possible. This involves heavily avoiding specific techs to not have many tech options after that. For example, if we avoided fusion missiles and took Corvette HP instead, we would have one extra option instead of two extra options. And if we just went ahead and went with Corvette build speed, we would just have this tech researched to be able to unlock tier 2, and then no additional techs to actually clutter our tree. However, since you also have limited time, instead you want to select techs that will not only not clutter your uh, options pool, but will also come in handy with running your empire. For example, technologies like mining and engineering are just straight up good. You're going to have a plus 20% to production, and 20% is quite a lot. An empire with a lot of mining tech is not going to need as many pops to actually run its mines, and so can do just as well as an empire with a lot more pops by just having better tech. Additionally, certain techs like Consumer Goods 1 and Alloys 1 are also very, very useful. These guys allow you to upgrade your tier 1 alloys building to a tier 2 alloys building. This will not only provide more jobs, but will also consume strategic resources. Uh, that means that you have to actually unlock certain uh, strategic resource tech to be able to use it, uh, but that, that's whatever. You have to wait until you can get to tier 2 and unlock the technology before you can actually research uh, the respective tech for alloys of consumer goods. It is a stupid mechanic uh, because it does not consider whether you have a stock of these resources or not. It just considers whether you have the means to be able to extract those resources. The jobs that they give are just the same as the jobs given by tier 1 buildings. However, you get way more jobs per building slot. And considering how valuable building slots are, that is quite useful. Even when you go ahead and uh, extract or refine resources yourself, it is still more building slot efficient to have a tier 3 building and refinery than just a bunch of tier 1 buildings. And so in the end, these tier 1 techs are likely going to be unlocked after a lot of the tier 2 or even tier 3 techs, depending on your luck and fortune in getting these techs or to the galactic market. Although by the time your 2250 rolls around, you should probably have at least one of these techs. But even if you are behind when the market opens, you can very easily just buy resources off the market, upgrade your buildings, and uh, get a lot more production going. If you have less than 500 tech production by the time the market hits, uh, you should probably focus more on technology. Technology is very good, and so resources spent on research are generally going to be quite a good idea, instead of uh, just going ahead and increasing production in other factors. Tech doesn't ever just stop being useful. And uh, even when you hit the endgame repeatables, it is still worthwhile to keep researching. Although at that point, it might be worth it to just switch over to alloys and wreck everyone with your tech edge and massive fleets. But anyways, thanks everyone for watching. Uh, please leave a comment for what you want to see in the next guide. Uh, of course, like and subscribe and uh, join my Discord. I always post materials like this tech tree in advance on my Discord, uh, so you can be the first to check that out. But without further ado, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.